Hello everyone and welcome to GST with Sharada. So as we all know, there has been a plenty of changes in the GST law with effect from 1st October 2023. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about those changes which are relevant for an exporter, especially from the perspective of refund. And the changes have been there mainly in IGST Act. Right, so we all know that you know uh, section 54 is what is the main provision when it comes to refund. But having said that, section 54 of CGST Act itself draws power only from section 16 of IGST Act. So when it comes to any of the cross-border transactions, what is most important is IGST law, even more as compared to CGST law. Because integrated taxes are applicable when it comes to interstate as well as for outside India transactions. So for an exporter what is important is IGST law section 16 because it is section 16 which is actually the uh, actually the vital provision which is giving the zero rated benefit for an exporter and as I say these changes with effect from 1st October 2023 are substantial amendments in the act which means what this section 16 itself has undergone major change in the law which is very important for an exporter to take note of right. So as I say that it is a substantial amendment which means what the fundamentals have been changed. So when I say that the fundamentals are being changed what is important here is we need to go back and understand the fundamentals first isn't it. So as we try to understand the fundamentals I am going to take you through the section 16 of IGST how it was previously and how it has got changed now and what are all the notifications following it and how we can foresee things as we go forward right. So coming back section 16 of IGST Act. So it starts with subsection 1 where it says what is zero rated supply. Zero rated supply is basically export and SEZ supply and again when it comes to this subsection 1 there has been a major change which is applicable for SEZ unit. But that part I am not going to discuss in this particular video that would be posted as a separate video. In this particular video I am constraining myself only to zero rated uh, rather export related changes right. So section 16 subsection 1 as I said it talks about zero rated benefit being extended for these two type of supply that is export and SEZ. And what is important here is the zero rated supply which is distincting which is basically differentiating from what is exempted supply. The major change here is when it comes to exempted supply both are not taxable on both the cases there is no tax supply uh, there is no uh, tax liability at all on the supply. But what is different for a zero rated supply is that when it comes to zero rated supply even though there is no output tax liability the person can avail the input tax credit and this input tax credit what is availed but wherein you do not have a corresponding output tax liability because of this variation the corresponding input tax credit accumulation can be obtained as a refund and that is where section 54 of CGST comes into the picture that the refund mechanisms are guided by this section 54 right. So that kind of uh, enabling provision for ITC to be availed subject to section 17 restrictions is what is specifically given in section 16 subsection 2 and there has been no changes in that. What has mainly changed is section 16 subsection 3. Now what is given in this subsection 3? Let me read out to you how the law was previously that is before amendment and applicable until 30th September 2023. So how was the law framed is that a registered person making zero rated supply shall be eligible to claim refund under either of the following options. What are those two options? Option number one is making an export without payment of duty and which means for that you need to apply for bond or LUT letter of undertaking. So having obtained a bond or letter of undertaking the exporter has the option of making this export without payment of tax and correspondingly the accumulated input tax credit can be obtained as a refund under section 54 of the CGST Act. And the option number two is that the exporter can also make tax payment as against this particular zero rated supply as against this particular export invoice and having paid this particular uh, you know tax liability he can utilize the ITC as well so which means what the exporter will utilize the ITC he can first of all avail the input tax credit 
utilize the ITC and by way of utilizing the ITC he is, he is discharging the tax liability on that export invoice. Having discharged the tax liability, the same will be obtained as a refund through an automated refund mechanism by way of electronic transmission of data between the GST portal and the IceGate customs portal. So through this mechanism, the exporter has the option of getting refund without having any kind of application procedure. So once the GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B is being filed and this GSTR 1 whatever is the output tax liability that is being declared on the zero rated on these export invoices when that is aligned and that is being discharged in GSTR 3B and again when this GSTR 1 data is perfectly matching with your ICE gate related shipping bill details and all those stuff and if the ECM is also being generated by way of an automated transmission mechanism without any further requirement simply by properly filing your GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B the refund amount directly is the bank account of an exporter. So because of this benefit, most of the exporters would prefer to go for this export with payment of tax, right? But here is the major change. So as I said, the previous uh, subsection 3, it says that a registered person making zero rated supply shall be eligible to claim a refund under either of the following options. This is how it was option number 1 and option number 2. But if you read the amendment act that is with effect from 1st October 2023, here I take a pause and I want to give you one clarity that even though this particular amendment is made with effect from 1st October 2023, it was originally framed and it has been already brought by way of an amendment through the finance act in Finance Act 2021 itself, when Budget 2021 has happened, at that point of time itself, this particular amendment has been very clearly given in the Finance Act. But the effective date of this amendment was mentioned to be notified at a later point of time by way of a notification under I integrated taxes, right? So, which means what this amendment was already available to us for reading and we should be prepared that at any point of time, whenever the government wanted to bring this in force, at that point of time, they are just going to notify it through a CBIC notification under integrated taxes. So that is exactly what has happened now. So this has been given to us way back in 2021 itself and right now by way of notification 27 bar 2023 CGST, this particular provision, the, the amendment in this section 16 subsection 3 and 4 of ICST has been notified right now and that is going to be with effect from 1st October 2023. Now quickly coming back, section 16 subsection 3 as we stand as it stands today with effect from 1st October 2023. How, how does it read? A registered person making zero rated supply shall be eligible to claim refund of unutilized ITC on supply of goods or services or both without payment of integrated taxes under bond or LUT in accordance with the provisions of section 54 of the CGST Act or rules made thereunder, subject to such conditions, safeguards and procedures as may be prescribed. So the important point here which you need to distinction, which you need to differentiate is that if you read the old provision of this subsection 3, it says that a per registered person making zero debt supply shall be eligible to claim refund either of these two options. That's how it was. And now they are saying that by default the option which is available for an exporter, in fact this is for zero debt supply which includes SEZ also but as I said for this particular video we are going to restrict ourselves only for export. So for an exporter now the default option is export without payment of duty which is going to be done by way of LUT right and having done that the accumulated ITC can be obtained as refund. So does it mean that you know as an exporter you cannot do export with payment of duty can you not avail this automated refund no that's not how it is let's read on further I'm skipping the proviso for now and I'm directly moving on to section 16 subsection 4 because proviso will come back to it later that's a separate amendment. So now coming to this section 16 subsection 4 which has been introduced now what it says is that the government may on the recommendation of the notification and subject to such conditions, safeguards and procedures by notification specify a class of point number one, right? So subclause one, it says that a class of persons who may make zero rated supply on payment of integrated taxes and claim refund of the tax who pay, right? So subclause one is for 
class of persons and the second class is for a class of goods or services right a class of goods or services which may be exported on payment of integrated taxes and the supplier of such goods or services may claim the refund of tax so paid so the first category is for the person and the second category is for the goods and services and the first category is for zero rated supply and the second category of goods or services is specific for export right so carefully read this and what is more important is the way this particular provision starts is that the government may on the recommendation whatever it is the government may by notification specify this class of persons or goods however way they want to call it they are going to specify who can make zero rated supply on payment of igst who can who you know who can make this export on payment of igst so which means what previously it was available by default for everyone and now the way in which the act has been amended by default it is not the option of export with payment of duty is not available it is available only if it is being notified under section 16 subsection 4 so the the particular clause has been negatively worded so if i have to give you a reference to how the negative uh, wording is if you refer to the old uh, service tax law originally the service the service the service tax used to be from finance act 1994 right so originally how it was framed is that they have given the list of services for which service tax has to be paid but if you see there was a point of time when they shifted to negative list what is that negative list by default for any service tax is applicable unless and otherwise it is being mentioned in this particular list so which means they have negatively worded it and that is what we call as negative way of uh, charging the taxation so very similarly what has happened here also is that previously by default any exporter has got the option to make export with payment of tax but right now only if it is being notified the exporter can go for with payment of tax unless in other ways it is not being notified there is not even an option to export with payment of taxes right so now what exactly is the impact having said that this is with effect from 1st october 2023 parallelly a notification is also being issued notification integrated taxes 1 bar 2023 has been issued dated 31st july 2023 which is effective from 1st october 2023 so as much as they are creating this amendment in the law they are parallelly issuing a notification as well right now having said that this notification is issued only for an exporter and not for a seizer regarding this i will talk about it in a separate video but right now i am focusing only on the exporter so now coming back what is this particular notification what it does, what does it say is that i told you the provision in the law has been negatively worded right but when it comes to the notification it is very positively worded so what it says is that this particular uh, you know notification which, which is issued only for class 2 i said class 1 is for zero rated supply class of persons class 2 is for exporter and again for goods and services so the notification has been issued only for export and how does it says is that it notifies all goods or services except the goods specified in this particular table below as the class of goods or services which may be exported on payment of integrated taxes so the important point here is even though the provision has been negatively worded the notification is very positively worded in the sense any goods and services can be exported with payment of tax and automatic refund can be obtained except for those which are listed in this particular notification so what are those commodities they have given it along with the hsn uh, code as well but i am not going to deal with it in detail you can always refer to the official notification 1 bar 2023 integrated taxes if i have to give you a summary of it broadly they have tried to cover pan masala tobacco and some essential oils right so only these kind of commodities are currently being notified and for these commodities also refund is eligible it's not that refund is not eligible but the exporter can claim refund only under export without payment of tax and then they have to submit an rft01 application through online portal mechanism 
and then the refund actually the refund application gets scrutinized by the officer and only then the refund is being sanctioned for these products which means what for them the automatic route of refund is completely being blocked so they are not eligible for automatic refund mechanism which previously used to be there through customs integration right so now coming back what is very important to understand here is that the substantial amendment in the act has been completely done so which means what tomorrow as an exporter probably you may think that just because your products are not being listed in this particular notification you are free to do this export with payment of duty and you are free to get this uh, refund through automated mechanism but that's not how it works because right now you are free to get this automated refund but having said that the substantial amendment in the act has been already made and because of which at any point of time if the government wants to include any further commodities in this particular list they can always do that by way of you know making an amendment in this particular notification so very important or very interesting thing is also that usually when the act has to be amended it's not a very simple easy legal procedure it has to be you know first of all the draft law has to be there with some uh, rationale behind and then that has to be passed by you know in the finance bill and then that has to be converted into the finance act by way of passing it through the two houses of parliament so all these things have to happen for a for a change in the act but having said that if a notification has to be changed all these procedures none of these procedures are even required the gst council can recommend any further commodities to be added to this list and then the cbic can simply issue a notification and those goods or services can also be added in this particular list so if you are an exporter even though your commodities are probably not listed currently in this particular notification as a restriction have a careful vigilant watch on this particular notification because at any point of time if this notification gets amended and your commodities are added in it then you are not going to get the option of exporting with payment of tax you need to mandatorily go for without payment of tax and then the refund application has to be separately submitted online right it's so very important thing is keep a watch on this particular notification 1 bar 2023 and keep yourself updated on what is being added here one more thing that we can also think of is that tomorrow if at all the government wants to uh, decide that this particular export with payment that is the automated mechanism itself has to be given only for certain goods and services and not open for all even that also can be made because the the original act has been completely reframed so the law very clearly states that unless and otherwise the goods or uh, services are specifically being notified the exporter does not have the option of going for this automated refund by default the option which is available is only export without payment of taxes which means what the default option is without payment of tax and with payment of tax is allowed only if it is being notified so the cbic can even make a complete change in this notification at a future point of time by saying that except for the following goods and services none of the other goods and services can be made as export with payment of taxes so but right now you know those things are not going to be very near but what is very important for us to understand is that the right now the cbic has got the power to do all these things because the substantial amendment in the act has already taken place so have a careful vigilant watch on this notification and make sure that you are not getting refund through a channel which is not available for you see end of the day as an exporter you are going to get the zero rated benefit that's not being denied right but how do you get the refund that really makes a lot of difference you can you cannot even say that you know ultimately it's only a procedural difference i would have anyway got it through export without payment of tax and that is what i have probably wrongly claimed through export with payment of tax no that is not even possible the reason being the act itself has been amended so which means what you are you know it's not just the notification which is giving you the restriction as an exporter you are allowed to make export with payment of tax and claim the refund only if it is being notified right so what if if at all your commodity is getting added to this list and you missed to find it out and then you probably you know claim the refund what does it happen end of the day you may think that it's just the refund mechanism but what happens here is that first and foremost thing if it is prohibited and if you are still claiming the automated refund then you will be expected to return that refund along with interest at 18% right so point number 1 and what is more crucial is 
if at all you fail to you know identify this and by the time it is being identified by yourself or by the department the time limit for refund application under section 54 is also exhausted which is only 2 years if that is also exhausted and if you are too late then you may probably miss out the chances of refund itself but don't worry all these things will take a long way to get go but at this point of time what is most important for an exporter is to be aware of that these kind of substantial changes has already taken place and it's only a matter of time that your commodities may get notified at some point of time in this list and once it is being listed you can continue to get the refund that is not the problem but how do you get the refund it may not be an easy mechanism of automated refund by way of just simply filing your shipping bill properly by filing your gstr1 properly and your 3b properly no that's not the end of all you may also have to take the additional effort of submitting a refund application wide rfd01 that would be the effort that would be required by the exporter but having said that the refund is not going to be denied but it's just not something that would happen to you automatically but rather only after being scrutinized by the officer right so this is a very important change in the law which has taken place now one more thing which we have to understand is when it comes to this these list of commodities which are being currently listed that is the palm masala tobacco and certain essential oils one check that they have also parallelly implemented in the custom circular is that there is a circular 24 which has been issued by the customs uh, dated 30th september 2023 for an implementation of this particular change which has happened in the law and this particular notification so what they are saying is that dg system cbic has developed a back end functionality through which if a shipping bill contains these list of hsn for which the automatic refund is not possible if the shipping bill contains these hsn then you will not even be in a position to generate the shipping bill so which means what let us say you have a shipping bill and the shipping bill contains you know uh, 15 items out of which even if there is one particular line item the, uh, the hsn code which is specifically blocked for this particular export with payment of duty but you attempt to file it under with payment of duty if you are making it as without payment of duty no problem but you attempt to do it under with payment of duty then the entire shipping bill it is not possible for you to even file the shipping bill to that extent they are also parallelly you know creating mechanism see the objective from the government perspective is that having created a particular restriction they also want to see to it that they have some automated procedures to make sure that this particular restriction is actually there in place but you look at it from a genuine exporter's perspective i would say it's a welcoming change that the G- dg systems of customs is acting proactively because if at all there is a you know uh, inadvertent error by claiming this export with payment of tax unnecessarily you may have to return the refund along with the interest so by way of having these kind of automated checks in the dg system it is good that you know at the stage of shipping bill itself you will be able to identify that somewhere you are going wrong and then you always have the opportunity to correct it and then file your shipping bill properly so this is one important thing that has also been issued through the customs now coming back i told you that i am skipping that proviso to section uh, 16 subsection 3 of this igst which has been inserted now let me go back to it that is also one more important thing which an exporter should make a note of now going back to that proviso what does it say is that an exporter of goods not for services because i'll tell you why so an exporter of goods is supposed to bring the forex as permitted by the rba within a particular time frame and if the exporter fails to do that within that time frame whatever refund that he has obtained that entire refund has to be repaid along with interest this particular restriction was already available in rule 96b but what was happening is that the rule uh, you know there were some uh, issues raised that it is only available in the rule but not in the act so to put an end to this kind of controversy now an amendment has been made in the act as well so that this particular you know ex post facto condition not a pre condition so the important point here is why is it not there for services because for services it is a prior condition that is a, a transaction will be treated as or qualified to be an export of service only if the monetary forex as allowed by the rbi is being received within the time frame right now when it comes to goods this is not a prior condition because goods are tangible by way of shipping bill and linked with the i scale details and again linked with the egm it is possible to ensure that the goods have actually moved out of india 
So what the law says is that as an exporter of goods, you can always do this export and also you can get the refund without even waiting for your actual forex realization, no problem at all, you can take the refund. But having done that, within the RBA prescribed time limit, you should have realized this forex or as and when it is being permitted by RBA, you can even bring it in INR, that is not the problem. But you should have received this export process within the time frame as prescribed by the RBI. And if you are not bringing that, then you are supposed to return whatever is the refund that you have obtained along with interest. This provision, as I said, already was there in Rule 96B. The same thing has been now brought under Proviso to Section 16, Subsection 2. This is also an important amendment from an exporter's perspective. So I hope this video would have been much beneficial as an exporter for you. So thank you so much. Stay tuned for more GST with Sharon.